and they rebounded really quick. Pick those. You know, you can do selective breeds and food you start. Sound for before treatment. Do I really need to treat it? Just be able to see what the uh, might count for a hundred years. You know, that's what she was doing this afternoon, right? You did a mic count out in would you treat that out? Yes. Because there's a tolerance level. She's going to treat her high because it's over that tolerance level. Okay. Use the threshold. That's what she's doing. She's using the threshold. Go ahead. Okay, now, I've got some big names in beekeepers right here, okay? This is Randy Oliver, PhD. This is James Ellis, PhD. This is Marla Stitty, PhD. This is Jennifer Berry, PhD. I have both heard all of these people and I've both read from all these people. This is what they say. If you are not controlling your mites, you are killing your bees. That's what they say. Some of the smartest brains in the beekeeping industry. Now we've got other things that tell us mites kill bees. Science tells us. Okay? Bees tell us mites are killing us. You go to a dead out, you go to a dead out, and you can, there's certain indications that what killed them. You can find evidence that mites were there and mites did the damage. It's mites produce guano sweat. You can find mite feces. So most of the time you go to a dead out. When's the last time you treat with mites? Well, I've treated them with mites when? Uh, I think it was February 2016. Mm -hmm. You can find evidence that mites were there and mites took care of the bees. The mites tell us that they kill bees. Once you get the mites out, what happens to the colony? It improves. It improves. So we got a lot of evidence to tell us. But go ahead and turn the page. We had this one guy named Tom Seeley, also a PhD. You know, great. This is what he says. I'm trying to give you, I'm trying to give you different perspectives on this so, so this, you realize it's not my opinion. This, this is what I read. See. Tom Seeley, in his latest book, it's called Living with Bees. I think, is that right? Living with says, do not treat colonies. Do not treat. Instead, kill any colonies in a high mic level. Okay. How's that going to help you with your money production? I mean, uh, also, he says, if you want to control your minds, keep them in one deep. Don't add, ever add anything to it. That's so they can swarm out and they get a brood break. And that's once they have that brood break, then the mites disappear. And he also says keep them at least, keep your hives at least 60 meters apart. That's 192 feet apart. That's so they won't drift and bring mites from one colony to the next. Now, you know. I don't know about y'all, but if I space my colonies 192 feet apart, I take up three acres. You know? And I walk enough. Maybe he's got something. Am I willing to try? Wait a minute. Okay, cool. Alright, there are certain there are a lot of things that we can do to control mites. There are cultural practices, and then there's soft acids and chemicals, and then there's hard chemicals. Now some of the cultural practices is we can requeen with hygienic stock. Minnesota, uh, VSH, Queens, uh, Varroa sensitive hygiene, we can try the Russians. They always say that Russians do, do real good controlling mites. Uh, we can get some Purdue mite biters. That's just one of the things that we can do. That's a cultural practice. It, it's, it's not adding anything. It's not taking anything away. It's just changing the 
race of the bee. Drone groove removal. This is one of the things that I do right here. I mean, I talk about drone, drone removal, but I don't like to, I don't, at one point in time, I got tired of going to the freezer. Okay, so what I do is I take a medium frame and I put it in a deep box, and the, the bees will, you know, I take two, I put two. And the bees will add that strip of drones across the bottom. You've seen that? Right? I'll pull that out and just take a knife and just cut that off instead of going to the freezer with it, cut it off and put it in my wax pile and put it back, right back in there. That way I don't have to go to the freezer and freeze it back, put it, put it back out. You know, so that's that's a form of drone room removal. It's really easy and you know, I get a little extra wax, but not much. But that's, that's what I do now instead of the drone frames. Uh, splits and artificial swarms. Yes, anytime you make a split or you make an artificial swarm, same thing pretty much. There's going to be a brood break, and that's, if you interrupt them for 21 days or so, the mites are going to not be able to reproduce. Okay, because they reproduce inside the sealed cone. Okay. The screen bottom hole. This, this is a fact that between 10 and 11 percent of mites fall out of a hive every day. Okay, of course they're reproducing faster than that. But that is one thing that you can do that will lower my count. And of course, cage the queen. That's the same thing as the artificial swarm. You just take her out of circulation, not let her lay for an extended period of time so that there's a root break, and there's no sealed root, and when there's no sealed root, the mites cannot reproduce. Okay. All right, now we're talking about the natural chemical. Apigar, 25% thymol and 75% other ingredients. I, I, I'm going to demonstrate how to use them when I get to it. Okay. This, these are names we need to remember. I talked about the cultural practices already, and I'm going to talk about the natural chemicals. These are chemicals that are found in nature. These are not man-made. They're not synthetic. Uh, Formic acid, oxalic acid, there's a certain amount of those in plenty already. So you're not really putting anything that's not there already to some extent. Okay. Apolite bar, you notice it's Apigar is 25% thymol, Apolite bar is 74% thymol, and 26% other essential oils. Formic pro, it's 42% formic acid. They don't make my way quick strips no more. If you buy them, Forming is how you're buying it now. Hot Guard 3, this is brand new, had not been out too long. Hot Guard 1, Hot Guard 2, and now Hot Guard 3. This, they've had a lot of problems with it, and I'm hoping that they, I, I say problems, the fact is the results haven't been, they haven't been as efficacious as they could hope it would be. So a lot of people were beginning to complain about it. So they reformulated it a little bit, and hopefully they made it a little bit better. I don't know, I've not tried it yet. It probably hadn't been out for two, three months. I've got the date on the other slide. Anyhow, and then of course, oxalic acid. There's different ways to apply it. I'll talk about those. What you buy at Lowe's, or the Home Depot for wood bleeds is 96%. I buy a pharmaceutical grade, which is 99.8% oxalic acid. What I find is when I burn it, when, I mean, you know, when I vaporize it, it don't leave as much residue in the vaporizer. Okay. All right, then we have the synthetics. I want you to understand how strong this stuff is right here, okay? Look. Apple ball, 3.3% amateur. That's all. 3 3.3. 96% other stuff. Okay, and then apple stand is 10 and a quarter percent. Cow to validate, 89% other stuff. Uh, I didn't even put check my up there because that's 
That's got so bad. That's got so bad. It leaves residue in the colony. It don't even control. It controls high beetles better than it controls uh, mites. Okay, so if you're going to use check mites, use it for high beetles. Don't use it for yes. Sir. If you got a question, just wave it. Oh, get the sweat off the top of your head. I have to do that a lot. All right, so here's the first one, apple guard. Come, I'm going to present, there's different ways to apply this. I'm going to present what the hobbyists, you know, somebody with four or five pounds is going to do. Most of y'all are not going to go by a five pound pail <coughs> with a measuring spoon and dip it in into a little plate. I mean, you're just going to buy it like this. It comes in a little tin, kind of like this. There's certain things on the, on the labels, though, that I wanted to point out. And you need to read all these labels. But uh, a lot of people, they go watch the YouTube video on how you apply them so they don't really read the label. And then they want to know why it didn't work. So let's turn it. I want you to look one thing right here. See what that word is? What does that say? Danger. Okay. All these chemicals, soft or synthetic, use that word. Turn it back. Next. Next. Okay. Now let's look at some of the things it, it can do. Irreversible eye damage. Like that. I see beekeepers do go out and they don't put nothing on. You know all you about to do is get one drop in your eye by accident. I know that never happens to anybody, right? You know, that's why you have to read this stuff. Require personal protective equipment. And here's something else. It, it is a violation of federal law to use this product inconsistent with its labeling. Oh, here's one. Read the entire label. <laughs> we get to the directions and we forget the rest. All right? And now, just to make sure you understand, failure to follow directions may result in poor eye control. Oh, I know how to do it. I watch it on the I watched it on YouTube. Somebody told me that on Facebook. All right. Anyhow, Apigar has high and low temperatures. Maximum low, the maximum low temperature is 60, the maximum high is 105. That's inside and high. Restrictions. Do not treat during the honey flow. Leave the product in the colony. Until the trays are empty. I'm going to show you how to use this. And remove surplus honey super for applying treatment. So don't go out there with your honey supers on and throw this in. All your honey will smell like time off. Go ahead and turn the page. Okay. So I'm going to show you the 1.76 ready to use aluminum tray. That's what most hobbyists are going to get. That's what most people are going to do. You got 5,000 pounds, you might be, you might get a price break if you go strong. Okay? But it comes in the little tin like I showed you before. I was on the picture of it up here. And I kind of made these things so they're not exactly, they're not exactly the <coughs> thing, but this is this is what you do. And imagine now, you have to remember that I've already put on all my personal protective equipment. I'm not starting a YouTube video. I've got my gloves on. I've got my face mask on. I'm ready. I've got my eye goggles on. You basically peel the, peel the tray back, and it exposes the apple oil. And you don't peel this all the way off. You leave that on. You put it in the middle of the eye. Now, you can't close it right up. You've got to have some space above that. So I use a space over here, but if you don't have one, you can just use that extra super, it doesn't matter. It has to have space so that it can evaporate from that because it is an odor, it is a concentration of air that keeps
kills the mites. So it's got to escape that tin. If you close it right up, you did nothing. But I use a spacer and put it in, and now I can close mine. Put the top of mine. You can leave this open. Probably need to close the screen bottom door. Alright, now you leave it, you leave this. I think it's I think it's a 12 days. It's been a long time since I used it. You put it on for the, we'd have to go back and check the label with you. I think, oh, uh, yeah, I think it's about one week, all right, here it is. After a week, after a week, replace it with a second tray. Go in and take this out for another one. After another week, take this one out. Put the other one in. This is a three, three, three time treat. Okay, and then you leave this one for twelve days, and then you're finished. You take it off. Okay, so that's Abigail. All right, let's turn the page again. All right, what we got now? Apple Life Bar it comes in a little package, like so. Go ahead and turn the page and see what this has to say. May be fatal if inhaled. Did you read that? Wear eyewear, face shield, chemical persistent gloves, so forth, so on. I want you all to understand all that. Come on, she gives you a whole list of stuff. There's your violation of the federal law. We all know that. All, this stuff's going to be on every, every mic treatment. Okay? Understand this. There's nothing out there you can go to and get it on you that's not going to hurt you. There's a cost to use it there, so you might not want to cut it. Okay. Application of white apple light bar may be made in any season. Do not use when honey soup or are in place. Use only when daytime temperature is temperature restriction. A lot of these things have temperature restrictions, and if you go in and out of the temperature restriction, it's not going to be effective at all. Okay, so you're not doing it. All right, two treatments a year of ADMA. Two treatments. If I talk about neonicotinoids, you can't take beeswax and find neonicotinoids in it, but you can find as much as 7% to validate in beeswax from people that have used it. It's an old product of 2002, one of the first products that ever came out. Uh, and people used it by a ton, trying to save their mouth. And it, it's, it's uh, not very effective. It can be, there's certain pockets where it, it is effective. Uh, do I recommend this? No. For that one statement right there is part of this toxin to my business. Okay, what else we got? All right. Now, this is a chart, as you can tell. Uh, it has a lot of good information on it. What I want to do is offer this to anybody who will email me, tell me to send them this. You will find it's a very informative chart. It has all the treatments that we've talked about, active ingredient, method, efficacy, cost, the length of the treatment, can you treat with superdome, I mean, can you put superdome? It also has a temperature range, apple like bar, might away quick strips, 55, 50 to 85, hot bar, any temperature, oxalic acid, any temperature, apple bar, any temperature. That's a lot of good information on it. Okay. What is your email today? I'm going to show you that. Hold on a second. I got that on the other side. Okay. Okay. All right. When to use it? Population decrease, little, little or no brood, oxalic acid, hot guard. The only thing that I would do 
different to this chart. I will move Abigail up to August. To where? Mid August. Okay, that's when you want to get your, you want to start getting your bees clean in the last half of August. Okay, last half of August, first half of September. That's when you want to start getting your bees clean. Okay. So a lot of great information, and, and you shoot me an email, and I will send you this. It's a great tool. All right, go ahead and turn the page one time. Now, for information, for reliable information, don't go to the YouTube channel. Go to learningbeehealthcoalition.org backslash Varroa. They will tell you everything you need to know about Varroa. They will show reliable instructions on a, a, on a video that you can follow. They will, you know, that's one of the most reliable websites that I know of. Okay. All right, I'm going to tell you thank you for supporting and attending this meeting of the North Central Beekeepers Club, and thank you for listening. I'm sorry that I have talked too much. I hope that everybody got at least a little something out of it. And here's my email address. Here's my phone number. Okay. I might not can answer you in five minutes. If you send you me an email, I will get you that chart. If you call me and I don't answer the phone, leave a voicemail. I can't always answer the phone. I'm not in the big yard. I do not answer the phone while I'm in the big yard. Okay? Just, it would be like, what? Uh, wait a minute. What? Okay. I'll be happy to send you there or answer any questions, help answer any questions that you have. Okay? Now, anybody got any questions for tonight? No? Yes, sir. Overall, which one do you consider? I, I will tell you my regimen, okay? I always, number one, I always, I do not treat unless there's a threshold reason. Can you back this up when, back this up to chart? And when I say threshold, this is per hundred bees, okay? There's different ways you can test it. Right, this column right here is a threshold to use during this month. August, July, two, two mites per hundred, two per hundred, three per hundred, three per hundred. Okay, that's your threshold. If you hit, if it hits three mites, I'm treated. Okay, if I find, here's the deal. I got a, if I got a yard that's got six hives in it, if I find that one of those colonies has that number of mites in it, every hive in that jar is treated. Because, you know, Tom Seeley said it could have 60 meters apart. They're sharing. Drones can go in and out of any hive they want to. So that if you got one that has reached the threshold, the rest of them are not far behind. Even if they're not there, they're on the way. So if I have a yard that's above the threshold, Every one gets treated. Now, in my as far as my arsenal goes, August I will be you know late September, early August I will be using an apple ball. That's my cleanup for the year. That's my big weapon. Okay. November oxalic acid, vaporization. March. Oxalic acid vaporization. May, late May, early June, temperature dependent, formic acid. Okay. So that's what I and and, and then again August will be apple bar. So I start up. I use different ones. Bees are not likely, I mean mites are not likely to develop any resistance to formic acid or oxalic acid. Okay, because of the way it, it's not a poison, it's a it's an acid that literally eats chew the legs off, beats them up, burns them so they can't, you know, they can't function. It's not it's not like a dose, it's not like they're getting a dose of some poison that's gonna kill them. It's like it's killing them. Boom. Not a poison, it's a literal 
you know, they're not likely to develop. It's not systemic. Right. You don't go through a <clears> piece. <throat> it's just, it burns on or whatever it has to do. I don't think they're even sure about the mode of action that oxalic does. But they haven't found bees with any resistance. I mean, they have found mites with any resistance to it ever yet. And I doubt it will. Yes, sir. So I have uh, heard people say that if you catch a swarm, to go ahead and put a strip of apple bar in the box with them. Is that a way? All, is that a way? On the label here? It isn't. I wouldn't do that. However, however, you have no root. Right. You have no root. Mm -hmm. Oxalic acid. Kill everybody in there with no root. Hot dog. It's an own label useful hot dog. It tells you you can do it for the swamp before they made it through. But you didn't like hot dog. No, I didn't like it. That don't mean you want it. <laughs> it did. I'm sorry. I'm going to be pragmatic. You what you didn't like about it was it was messy. I, it was messy. And like I said, I, that was hot dog one. I, I never tried hot dog two or hot dog three. I have, I've heard people tell me that don't use it because it don't kill as many mites as it says. But by the same token, you have to repeat in order for it to be effective as mentioned by the manufacturers. In order for it to be effective, you've got to do the second treatment right after the first one and the third treatment right after the second. So you've got that extended period of time treatment. The way it reads, it says treat four times a year. Well, when you think about that, you think, oh yeah, summer, spring, fall, winter. But that's, that's not what they mean. You can call the president of Vito Pharma up and say, when should I use it? Right behind the last treatment. Bet your money. <laughs> David? Yes, sir. What would you recommend for a new beekeeper who's trying to sort through all of this what type of a simplified treatment schedule program would you recommend for somebody to just, just get into this? Okay, your first year, you start bees in April, May, when you start getting moves, right? You get a move or you get a package in generally in April or May, right? Okay, that first season, that first year, to Many, many, many beekeepers do nothing until start thinking about anything until August. Okay, because there hasn't been any brood. So they're not, there's no mites in there that are reproducing under the brood. There may be some phoretic mites. If you're worried about the phoretic mites, you can mix some of the oxalic acid uh, liquid, the uh, 35 grams to one liter sugar one to one sugar water and you can spray it, spray it on those bees while they're still in the package. And that will re remove any heretic mites, any, any adult mites that are in that package. Or you can put them in a box, go ahead and put them in the box. In about a week, you can do an oxide of acid, basic procession. Use two grams to the 35. You know? Or you can use hot bar, according to the label recipe. It's, 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 it's easier, I know I, I talk a lot, it sounds complicated, but it's easier than you think it is. Okay. You can buy this stuff just about anywhere, as far as honey bee suppliers. So you have two options. Don't worry about it, you'll always. Or go ahead and find something that's specifically for knocking off Ready models. You need so that's about it. Any additional questions? Yes, ma'am. When you did the um, alcoholic acid that you put in the in the syringe, mm -hmm. when you put five milliliters on each. Five milliliters. What was each. the formula? What did you say? I, I five mils on each each no, The mixture. The mixture. The mixture that one, mm -hmm. one. You mix one with one sugar syrup. One mm -hmm. liter of that. To 35 grams of, I, I think if 
I think I think if you buy oxide gas from a, a bee supplier, something like Manway or something like that, I think it comes in a 35 millimeter package. Yeah, it does. Okay. So you just get a package, dump the whole package in one liter of sugar syrup, and it's mixed. And then that's what you do, five milliliters on each, just over the three box. Each seam. If you got bees down in there, it goes in that seam. If you got a hint your seam, you don't have to worry about it. You know, like if you you got you have to come all the way out. Uh -huh. If you got an empty, if you look down there, there's no bees, there's no bees to it there. You know, it's, it's kind of, you have to kind of get used to doing that. I mean, it's always worried, I'm going to too much here, and I'm not there, what? But now, now, if I do that, I got a, I got a little sprayer, and I put it in, I don't even, I, I, Pretty much time it, you know, you have to right? When you do a 30 high instead of just threes, you know. But you can put five millimeters in your syringe and shh, right, you got it. Put five more, shh, shh, you got it. So you just put it on the bar part of it? Or no, between. You run, it, you run it in the seam. Right? Like between two frames. Yeah, so you're hitting the bees. Yeah. And you're hitting the bees. Yes. Putting it into the gaps. Yes. Okay. Good here. Yes. Any additional questions? Okay, then. Thanks for listening. Sorry for boring you. I hope I enjoy you all. 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 Thanks, David. Uh, it's really good coverage of the topic. <clears throat> and uh, there's, there's good, there's bad, and there's ugly out there for grow treatment. Uh, for God's sakes, don't buy anything off of Amazon that's coming out of China, please. <laughs> okay, there's some really nasty chemicals that you can get off of eBay and some other disreputable places. Please, the stuff, the stuff that Dave was talking about are expensive. I mean, it's probably one of the most expensive things we do is to treat for varroa. Don't try and save a nickel or a dime uh, treatment by buying some untested, unapproved chemicals. Um, Really, that's about the end of our program, although uh, if anyone has any questions about what's going on in their hives right now, questions that you have, we'd be happy to entertain questions for as long as anybody wants to, to ask them. David's here, John's here, myself, Peg. Uh, we've got a number of, April, uh, we've got a number of experienced beekeepers here. So uh, if anyone has any questions, you can feel free to ask now, or you can corral us after, after the meeting. Does anyone have any general questions? I, I've emailed him asking for that chart, and I'm going to put it on our Facebook page. Okay, so that chart will be posted on our Facebook page. That's good to know. Okay, okay, this is our first, uh, is our first uh, back since, uh, since the whole pandemic started, so hopefully we're going to be getting a few more people uh, as we go. We'll get back up to our 50 or so that we were getting before. So uh, we're, we're hoping, thank you everybody though for coming out tonight. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and braving uh, all of the, the conditions we're under and uh, uh, check our Facebook page for updates and uh, like I said, feel free to grab any of us who have questions after the fact. So, thanks.